For those of us who live in an area where winter weather is a reality, dry air is usually also an equally painful reality, sometimes quite literally, because sometimes that dry air causes lips to chap and skin to crack and all sorts of fun things. And one way that you can mitigate this is by use of a humidifier to put some additional moisture into the air. Now many of you are probably very familiar with the common types of humidifiers like the ones that might boil water into the air. You might even put a pot of water on your stove to do the same thing. Or put a pot of water over a furnace duct or something. Other common types of humidifiers include the rotating drum type where a drum covered in a foam-like material picks up water and has air forced over it by way of a fan. There are also humidifiers that use a sponge that wicks up water from a basin and the fan pulls air over the sponge keeping water in the air. But an older type of humidifier that worked a little bit differently and these have just now started to come back on the market recently is the ultrasonic type. And what I have here is a well-built ultrasonic humidifier from 1986. This was actually made by Gold Star for well-built and the way it works is it uses an ultrasonic transducer to pr produce humidity which is a very interesting idea. What you've got in here is a little kind of muffin or a tiny squirrel cage fan probably with a DC brushless motor that pulls air in and I bought this at a garage sale for about 75 cents and discovered this little air filter later. My guess is based on how plugged up with dust this thing was that it had probably never been cleaned throughout the entire life of the humidifier. Of course over here you have a more a more usual set of controls. You have a simple humidistat and you have a mist volume control. And the mist volume control is similar to the volume control on a piece of audio equipment because what it does is it increases the level of the signal going into the ultrasonic transducer. The ultrasonic transducer vibrates at such a frequency that it basically atomizes the water which is a very interesting use for ultrasonic technology. Let's have a look at how this thing operates. Well the first thing there is, there's a basin of water that sits on it and I have temporarily taken that away from here. There's also a set of cautions on the nozzle part here that says do not attempt to operate the unit without water in the tank, do not touch areas containing water while the unit is operating, and do not operate the unit without tank and nozzle in place. They're not kidding about at least one of those things. My parents used to have a sunbeam version of the same, which was a little bit bigger. And being the curious youngster that I was back in the day, when it was running, I put my finger right down in the ultrasonic transducer, and to put it bluntly, that hurt like hell. Basically, there is a high frequency, high voltage, high current waveform that is being fed into that transducer. And here's the air output from the fan. There's a level switch over here so that if water does run dry, the transducer does not get cooked because it is very dependent upon that water to keep itself cool. Something that you can prove to yourself, although I'd strongly suggest you not do this, by putting your finger in the little rippling water stream that's coming up. It will be hot. But when this thing is turned on, you can kind of see how it's exciting the water and flipping it over the edge of my desk. When the, when the duct is on here, combine that with the fan, then a, hum then a stream of humidified air comes out the top. And as this thing exhausts the water that's in the basin, it replenishes itself from the tank. So let's put it back together. Okay, so the unit's back together and working now. Here's what it does. When everything's been put back together and the little fan is able to push air up through this vent stack, and you have this little thing up here that you can turn to point the humidity where you'd like, all that's left to do is to set the humidistat accordingly and to figure out how much mist volume you want. Basically the mist volume is like unto a volume control on a stereo receiver or other audio equipment because the higher it's turned up the stronger the signal that's fed to the amplification circuit that ends up driving the ultrasonic transducer. And I've set this lamp up here to try and make it more obvious to see the humidifying effect as I turn the mist volume control up on the unit to produce more mist. Now right here it's at the low setting and it's just barely putting out any. In fact I can hardly see it. But if I turn this up you can see that the mist volume starts to gradually increase. If I max it out it really goes to town but you probably don't want to do that because if you humidify anything too much you'll end up making a rain cloud in your room and you might damage your furniture or start mold growing. 
But an ultrasonic humidifier, and these were really popular in the 80s and then they kind of faded out, is a pretty neat method to humidify the air.